This is a demonstration using the morph tool uh, to build a very simple railing uh, for a very simple set of stairs. You can see the stairs in plan. I am going to start in an elevation. Open elevation. I have already created a polyline which I will use as a path for the railing to follow. I've used the stairs as a guide to get the right slope on the polyline. I have the uh, ADA requirements at the top and the bottom uh, met and I will then curve the railing back until it ties into a post at the bottom and also up at the top. Once I have the uh, polyline I can move it up into the position that it needs to be. I'm going to move it uh, 34 inches. Oops, let's try that again. 34 inches up. I'm going to insert some hot spots. I haven't completely determined whether this is beneficial or not, but I'm going to anticipate that it is beneficial and stick some hot spots at the points that I need when I'm building the extruding the morph. Okay, there's a hot spot. So I'm going to select all the hot spots and I'm going to select the railing. Turn on the morph tool. Press the magic wand. Click on the railing. As you can see, nothing apparent has happened. Except there's the morph. The polyline is there as well. So now that I have created the morph, the morph uh, path exists at the elevation that I want it to be above the stairs and in position, uh, at least in elevation, in the correct place. I'm going to close that window, open another elevation, and as you can see here's the morph. I'm going to bring the morph over to where I'm going to want it to be. Looks like I made a copy of it instead. Three inches from the edge. Just delete that guy. I don't need two of them. And now I need um, to create a, another morph that I'll use as the actual railing that will be extruded uh, as it follows the polyline. So I'm going to turn on a um, circle tool. I can find it. Under document, circle, and I'm going to create a railing um, an inch and a half in diameter. So I'm going to make him three quarters of an inch in radius. There's my circle. Let's go ahead and change that to a solid line. And we're going to turn on the morph tool. magic wand. Hit it. There's the circle we drew. I'll delete that. Here's the morph. And I'm going to place the morph on the center of the polyline. Or what was the polyline is now the path, morph path that we're going to follow. So let's turn on both of those. Press F5 for 3D. And as you can see, here's the um, morph polyline. And where is our... We need to go back to plan to find this guy. The circle that we drew, when you create a morph, it comes in at the plane <clears throat> of the section or the elevation that you're drawing it in. So... I had already moved this guy, so he must be right here. There, there he is. Bring him up. Highlight the... Uh, path that we're going to follow. Press F5. Here's the morph. And that we're going to extrude. I need to move him into position. So I'll do a Control D for move. Click on the center. And Marquicad does not behave very well in this mode, but I'm going to think I actually did it. There we go. So now I have the 
morph the circle that I'm going to extrude and the polyline path that I'm going to follow. So at this point, <clears throat> I need to zoom in pretty close. I need to click on the surface of the morph. Or maybe the edge of the morph. Press the uh, Let's try this again. Let's turn on. This seems to help. If you come up here and change the um, selection arrow to the white one instead of the blue one. And now I can click on the surface of the morph and bring up the um, tube. And now what I'm trying to do is connect the end of my cursor to the starting point of the polyline. As you can see, he's there now. When I do that and click, it's following. You can see if I drag the cursor up, you can see that there's a line attached from the cursor to the polyline that we're using as a path. Now, I can't actually follow him around the curve like we can do in SketchUp, but instead I have to come up here to where I put that hot spot, and it's going to stop, and I'm going to click. And then I'm going to turn on the radius tool constrain, uh, hold shift down, it constrains it in a X, Y, Z location. So I'm going to constrain it up, go up, straight up to the intersection of the path above. Click. And now the trick is, is to get him in the right place. Now you can do this a couple of ways, but the safest way is to change the um, editing plane, which is not, this is going down the editing plane, but that's 90 degrees from where I want to be. So I can come up to uh, choose the next plane. There, that's the direction I want to go. And he will actually snap to that line. I also get a radius of six inches, and since I had this as a 12 inch, circle that's I know that's correct so he snapped in there change this back to straight rotating a little bit so I can see now I can press the shift key to constrain it in this direction that I'm traveling until I hit the next node click and hold down the shift key to constrain him in this direction until I get to the next node click the circle is not going to be drawn correctly by constraining this straight down. So I really need to find this half circle hot spot, which appears to be about right here. But I need to turn him into the uh, circle mode first. Six inches, that's good. And then I find this other line. Come on. He doesn't want to constrain in that direction. Since we're off grid, click, click. Here we go. Go back to plan. Oop. You need to change your um, tool tip from white to blue. Turn, uh, select the morph, bring him to the front. Let's copy the guy. And bring him center point with the edge of the stairs, and then come back in three inches. And there he is. So now I can select the uh, stairs and the two railings. Press F5, and you can see we've got stairs and railing. So now all I need to do is put a couple of columns in, and we'll use a morph for that as well. So we're going to go back to plan, turn on the circle tool, we're going to come up here and say um, we want the railing to be an inch and a half, so three quarter inch radius. Let's go ahead and make this guy a solid line so I can see him. I'm going to turn on the morph tool. Look, looks like nothing happened. Maybe it didn't. 
there's the morph. Something did happen. Okay, there's our morph for our column. I'm going to take this guy. Let's see. If, so I don't get him inside these stairs. Let's, let's look at him first and get him in position at five. So I know I'm going to want this guy somewhere about here. And I'm going to want this guy. I'm going to make a copy of him and put him up there at that level. So I've got one here, one here. Let's go back to plan. Already got this guy. Looks pretty good. Let's, let's say this is the edge of the step. And I want three inches of clearance between the edge of the railing and the edge of the step. Up here. There he is right there. bring him to the top. We're going to find the center of the morph and we're going to put him in the center of the railing and then we're going to put him in the center between this guideline and this guideline which is where the the uh, step top step ends and the um, radius of the curve handle starts here. So I'm going to put him halfway in between there. I'm going to use this um, special snap constraint tool to do that from there to there and I made a copy by mistake I'm going to delete this guy okay so we look good so now let's highlight everything do this rest of this in 3d five didn't bring my steps in 3D unfortunately, but we can still extrude these. Now I need to go back to that other selection tool. So instead of blue, I need white. I need to click on the surface of the morph. Now this actually behaves somewhat like SketchUp, so I can let's use the uh, push pull tool. Okay, Now, let's come here. It's more if we did before. Since this is a straight section, I can push and pull him. I cannot do that on a curved section, but this guy's a little straight section. Clicking here and pushing to the inside. And then I'm going to come back here. And we've got this tool selected. And I'm going to run all the way up to here and click it. And then I'm going to shorten this guy here. And we're going to go back to the halfway point. There we go. Now we can go back to plan. And we need to change this tool back to blue. And we're going to select. One column, or post, the other one. We're going to do a copy from center point to center point. We're going to now select everything. F5 for 3D. And we have now just need to trim this guy. Let's change back to the white tool. I should have just copied everything over and it would have been done, but that's okay. Good practice here. Back to there. Here. And now we have a reasonably efficient way to make a custom railing for a stair.